Hi guys, how are you doing today? And welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about nutrients, in particular six nutrients that help you boost your ovarian reserve and help raise anti-malarian hormone. Now this hormone is um, a gauge. It's a biomarker that you can get done. It's a blood test that you can get done and it's a biomarker that gives you an indication of your ovarian storage, so your egg storage and their quality. So it's just a gauge. And what I have found out in working with many women is that you can boost your ovarian quality and reserve. So you can increase that biomarker. So it's not set in stone. Now generally with your ovarian reserve and your ovarian storage and your eggs, with age they do tend to decline. But we're lucky with things like your overall health, with things like nutrients, with things like exercise, hormones, you can actually support your the egg health, you can support the reserve, you can support the quality, and then support your fertility. So today I'm not gonna be talking about things that overall to support your fertility, you know, things like N-acetylcysteine, or oh, some of the most common things I come across for infertility, which is MTHFR, not being able to metabolize folic acid and not taking the right B vitamins. That's one of the biggest things I see. Also low progesterone levels. Low progesterone levels are huge when it comes to infertility and recurrent miscarriages. So there's lots of other areas um, that can be looked at when it comes to fertility. But today, I just want to talk to you about anti-malarian hormone and how to improve, how to boost, how, support, how to support your ovarian reserve even from a young age but this is this is more important for those ladies after 35 after 38 when you want to have children a little bit later you want to be making sure that you're doing everything you can particularly for your eggs and so um let's talk a little bit about this you know in terms of things that can inhibit your ovarian reserve, in terms of things that can damage your ovarian reserve, you know, oxidation. So oxidation can come from in many different formats. It can come from pollution outside, it can come from stress, it can come from low fatty acids. Um, heavy metals, so if you've got high mercury, high lead or high cadmium, that can also cause problems with your ovarian reserve. Poor diet, so just having generally a bad diet, high in sugar. Um, hormones, so low estradiol or low progesterone can really um, encourage your ovarian reserve to dwindle and the quality to actually um, be low as well. And then insulin resistance is a biggie because high insulin causes inflammation, can cause oxidation. So that is a big one when it comes to your ovarian reserve. And I know last week one of the items I touched on when it came to your ovarian reserve was BPA. Studies have actually shown that women who are having to go through IVF have more BPA come up in their urine. So it looks like BPA is a huge factor when it comes to your ovarian reserve and quality of your eggs. So making sure that you're keeping BPA out of your lifestyle, you know, plastic cups, plastic bottles, plastic mugs, all of those kind of things, and also making sure that you're continuing to cleanse from BPA. So I talked about this a couple of weeks ago when I did my cleanse series, but things like spirulina, lots of chlorophyll, that kind of thing. Um, on the Breakthrough Membership Program this week, actually, I'm going to be taking the members through a smoothie that's actually designed to help cleanse and cleanse your body from BPA. So that's gonna be a really important one, particularly for women who are trying to conceive and want to boost the anti-malarian hormone. Another one is um, Advanced Glycation End Products. Um, these are produced from overcooked meats, barbecued meats, when you mix too much fructose with protein and it actually causes a lot of oxidation and these have been shown to severely deplete your ovarian reserves. These are in foods like crisps and chips, you know, um, foods that have been fried in canola oil, vegetable oils. So this is why diet is so very important, particularly if you are that over 35 at 38 and you really wanna spend the next couple of months working on your ovarian reserve. Um, risk factors as well, so I wanna quickly touch on risk factors. Risk factors can be polycystic ovarian syndrome and also endometriosis. 
Both of those conditions affect hormones and we know that polycystic ovarian syndrome very much related to fluctuating levels of follicle stimulating hormone. And so um, with both of those, with, with the polycystic ovarian syndrome, you can actually have very, very high antimalarian hormone because you've got follicles, you've got oocytes that aren't actually de developing. So you've got maybe seven or more follicles on the ovaries that are all producing this hormone, but they're not actually developing into a full oocyte. So, um, and in, in every every ovulation, sorry, they're not they're not ovulating so they're kind of building up and you might if you have a scan done and you've got polycystic ovarian syndrome you might have seven ten maybe more of these immature follicles on your ovary so these are risk factors of having fluctuating um, anti-malarian hormone and these can really be indicative of your of problems that you might be having in terms of trying to get pregnant so there are things you can do and that is the beautiful thing about this if you've had a test recently in your very low or you've been trying to conceive and you've been finding it very difficult i would recommend um, using these tactics or getting your um, anti-malarian hormone tested just to see if it is your ovarian reserve the quality of your eggs if this is actually an issue for you because if you're not able to get pregnant it could be something else like i mentioned earlier maybe you've got mthfr and you really need to be taking folinic acid maybe you're low in b12 and you really need to be taking it taking um, sublingual b12 or maybe you've got very low iron stores or you're hypothyroid women low in iodine find it very hard to conceive so just taking a couple of drops of iodine each day can really increase your chance of getting pregnant. So you need to understand what's going on and so then you can support your fertility. But in terms of your eggs, one of the number one things, one of the number one nutrients, but it's not actually a nutrient, it's a hormone, but it's very, testing is very, very under underutilized. And this is DHEA. DHEA is a hormone. It's a precursor to testosterone. It's a precursor to cortisol in the hormone cascade. It um, can also steal from progesterone, but it is a master hormone. It gives you energy, it's anti-aging, it's anti-cancer, it's wonderful. But unfortunately in women, as we age, you know, from 35 onwards, our DHEA stores lower. We might get more fatigue, we might get more illnesses, we might find it hard to lose weight, we may get depression, we may get premature aging like grey hairs or wrinkles and um, we may find it difficult to fall pregnant because DHEA is so very, very important for our ovarian reserve and so very important for our egg quality. So if you've had your saliva done or your um, or your blood test done and your DHEA, DHEA is suboptimal, I highly recommend you talk to your um, endocrinologist, your GP or your specialist in terms of supplementing with DHEA. So when we talk suboptimal, we're talking functional medicine here. So if it's between, um, on the chart, they say between say 7 and 15 is great. So 7 and 15. If yours is at the at, uh, you know, sorry, two and if yours is un, if yours is at a lower end, you need to be supplementing if you're trying to get pregnant. If you haven't been trying to get pregnant, to support your eggs. If it's in the middle, it's okay. If it's towards the end, it's fine. But if it's anywhere at the lower end, then this could really be inhibiting you from falling pregnant. Studies show that um, 25 milligrams to 100 milligrams a day supports and boosts ovarian reserve and can raise anti-malarian hormone. So that's a very important one. Unfortunately, DHEA, you can't get from stores or health food stores in Australia. In America, you can, but I do highly recommend you see a specialist because DHEA can funnel into estradiol and estrone. So if you're stressed, if you have high blood sugar, or if you've got a family history of ovarian or estrogen dominant cancers, you do need to be very careful with this and always monitor it because you don't want it to be funneling into estrogen and then increasing your chances of an estrogen dependent cancer. But it is a very important hormone when it comes to your ovarian reserve and boosting your anti-malarian hormone. Next is CoQ10. So CoQ10 is a wonderful antioxidant. It's great for the Krebs cycle, fantastic for energy. 
um, wonderful for depression, great for chronic fatigue, but also CoQ10 in a biquinol form, ubiquinol form, sorry, ubiquinol form, which is the active form, 150 milligrams to 300 milligrams a day, has been shown to increase egg numbers of women who are getting egg um, eggs done for IVF. So it actually supports supports your eggs and it's great for egg retrieval as well if you're going through IVF. So CoQ10 is wonderful to support your egg stores, anti-malarian hormone and the quality of your egg stores. So you want to be looking at the active form ubiquinol and you want to be looking at around 150 milligrams to 300 milligrams. It's wonderful. Now when I go through this, I go through all of my all, all of the um, uh, studies just to see what studies are out there and I came across a wonderful study for vitamin D. So vitamin D is number three nutrient. This is an interesting one. Vitamin D is, has been shown to be so powerful and I actually had a client with very low anti-malarian hormone. She was told by her GP she'd find it very difficult to get pregnant. We put her on vitamin D and a month later she fell pregnant and her anti-malarian hormone um, results actually increased. So it showed to me and it was really highlighted to me and gave me that moment of, okay, the importance of vitamin D is so much more than we actually realize and it can change things quite quickly. So I thought I wanted to look for a study and I found a study, okay? I found a study that was, um, women were put into two groups, they were given vitamin D, 50,000 IU of vitamin D and the, and the other group were given a placebo. The group that were given 50,000 IU of vitamin D, their vitamin D um, increased over the next, um, the next day and then con and continued to increase for the following week. But not only that, in the group that took the vitamin D, not the control group, their anti-malarian hormones increased that following week. So just one week of a super high dose of vitamin D increased the anti-malarian hormone. So this can actually give you an indication of how quickly vitamin D can be working. So it's really important, one, to get your vitamin D tested, Two, in winter time, you want to be taking, you know, a couple of thousand IU a day. Three, if you're going through IVF and you're going to have an egg retrieval or you're looking to get pregnant and you know your anti-malarian hormone is low and you know your egg storage is a bit low or you're over 38, a week doing a high dose of vitamin D a week before can actually be shown to be beneficial. So that's a really interesting study. And along that, they did three cohort studies as well, three cohort studies as well that I found. Actually shows that in summertime, in wintertime, sorry, there is an 18% decrease in anti-malarian hormone. So these are for women in cold countries. If you're struggling, struggling in countries where you really don't get much sun, sunshine, you need to be looking at your vitamin D levels and you need to be supplementing to support your anti-malarian hormone. And just know that it actually can happen quite fast. So if you know your vitamin D is low and you know you're trying to get pregnant and you've been struggling because your anti-malarian hormone is low, do a big dose the week before ovulation and see how you go. I think that's, in, and then also the next month as well. So just keep keep on doing this once monthly and see how you go, as well as doing your, you know, two to 4,000 IU a day, particularly if you're not getting any sunshine. So that's a really interesting one. <coughs> number four, number four, L-arginine. I love arginine for fertility. It's great for guys, it's great for women. Um, it supports your heart, it gets blood moving, um, all over the place, everywhere. So um, centrally and to your peripherals. We know what caffeine does. So caffeine can actually close down your venous system. So arginine kind of opens it up. So arginine is wonderful getting blood supply to the ovaries and this gets more nutrients to the eggs. This gets more vitamins and it gets more oxygen and it gets more nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is an important um, part of the puzzle when it can open all the, the um, it can open up the venous veins, 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 and it can get the blood um, pumping everywhere. So it's very, very important. Now, L-arginine has been shown to be great for men and women, but particularly for um, egg storage. Now, on a side note, just for you women trying to conceive, if you have problem with um, your monthly mucus, the egg mucus, L-arginine has been shown 
to increase that most likely because it does help with blood supply down there so up to about a gram of l-arginine a day it's an amino acid be careful with l-arginine if you suffer from cold sores and all of that kind of thing because it can um, bring on some viral infections like cold sores so just be aware of that um, number five, L-acetylcarnitine. L-acetylcarnitine also is an amino acid and it's been shown that about one to two grams a day supports egg quality and supports the nu nutrition within the eggs and it's also been shown to boost the actual quantity and the anti-malarian hormone and also just support them in general to reduce free radical. Basically what l does is it creates energy store. So it um, helps to create energy in the Krebs cycle, coenzyme A, um, and it really supports um, beta oxidation. So kind of the breakdown of nutrients within the egg sac within the eggs, within the mitochondria to create energy. So L-acetylcarnitine is fantastic, one to two grams a day. L-acetylcarnitine can also be used for things like depression, up to four grams a day. It is a wonderful amino acid and it's wonderful at boosting energy and just helping your own cells and mitochondria to break down the fuel to create energy. So I think that's a must have, particularly in women who are trying to get pregnant over 38 in terms of creating um, better quality egg storage and just energy and having everything do what it needs to do down there as well. Um, lastly is krill oil. So krill oil and omega-3. So krill oil doesn't contain as much omega-3 and as much DHEA as say regular fish oil. But the reason I love krill oil is because of the phospholipid, the way it is made up, the phospholipid structure. It's much easier to absorb the bioavailability our eggs can absorb it now if you've been on long-term medication for a chronic illness and you come off that and you're looking to looking to conceive i highly recommend doing kind of a bit of a fat flush because our, it takes a long time our, the fats in our body contain uh, kind of a buildup of all these chemicals so especially if you've been through radiotherapy or you've been through chemotherapy you really need to be having really high doses of krill oil and really high doses of fish oil to kind of renew the fat cells within your eggs within your body to kind of flush out any of these toxins that might you might have been going through in the last year and you need to spend a lot of time doing that so definitely high fats in krill oil but also in fish oil can be so beneficial but I do love krill oil for the fact it's really easy to absorb um, the, because of the phospholipid structure it's kind of similar to the structure that we have and then it has astaxanthin in, which is a wonderful antioxidant so um, I'm all for krill oil it is a little bit more expensive you're looking at doing about one to two a day normally the capsules but I find it hugely immensely beneficial and it's so good for brain health as well so that is DHEA is a hormone to look at that is coenzyme Q10 ubiquinol form with the activated form that's 150 to 300 milligrams a day vitamin D you know 4,000 IU a day or if you know you've got low vitamin D or you know that you've got issues with your egg reserves or you know you're over 38 you might want to look at doing a really high dose vitamin D once a month before ovulation um, also with vitamin D for women with polycystic ovarian syndrome has actually been shown to help with um, with um, creating a the creating like a full follicle in ovulation so some women with PCOS as we discussed before they have many follicles which are immature and they don't mature so vitamin D if you've got PCOS can really help you with this as well um, L-arginine which is an amino acid gets blood flow everywhere wonderful for feeding the eggs wonderful for getting blood into that area but it can also help with your egg white mucus um, and LH serve around ovulation L-acetylcarnitine which is also an amino acid wonderful at getting those energy stores in your eggs and then finally krill oil I love it because of the phospholipid structure it can actually help to support 
your eggs support um, the nutrition in them but also krill oil has been shown to delay aging in studies that have taken place so those are my six nutrients to support your ovarian storage and to raise anti-malarian hormone now as well as that we've got lifestyle and food so this is it really goes without saying it's that it's a normal healthy diet you want to be decreasing oxidation in your body 100% you want to be making sure that you're not having deep fried foods you want to be making sure you you're not having too much sugar you want to be making sure you're not having too much high fructose with protein to increase glycation in the body you want to be having lots of antioxidants polyphenols are wonderful dark chocolate green tea berries um, acerola berry um, lots of lots of vibrant colors in your in your um, in like fruit and vegetables I forgot the word for fruit and vegetables you want to not overcook your food you don't want to burn it you don't want to barbecue it too much you want to do steaming you want to do um, having lots of raw food you want to do maybe slow cook food stews that kind of thing and then also as I mentioned last week spirulina is wonderful spirulina is wonderful to just support any oxidation in, in the body so I do advise that then of course good fats your vitamin E's you want to be getting avocado salmon good fatty fish proper good quality salmon cheap salmon is just going to harm you so you want to be getting either really good wild um, Canadian Alaskan Scottish sockeye salmon try and stay away from farm salmon if you can't find a good quality salmon then just go with your fatty white fish like sardines um, heron that kind of small white fish wild caught if possible and then of course um, meat good quality not um, free range organic meat where you can and just staying away from things like factory farm chickens that are full of hormones and I did want to just do a note for vegetarians when it comes to being vegetarian it can be really difficult to get your essential fatty acids and krill oil I've mentioned but maybe you can try something and I know this does you just have to take a higher dose marine algae so marine algae does have some DHA in it um, EPA so if you're trying to work on your fertility and you're trying to support your eggs as a, as a vegan or vegetarian algae spirulina take vitamin D you must take vitamin D and if you don't want to take the vitamin D that's sold in stores because it's not vegan, you can get vegan types of vitamin D, but it's so important for you, so please. And then don't miss out on your amino acids as well, vegan, so that you're getting your arginine, you're getting your acetylcarnitine as well, um, as well as your essential fatty acids. So I hope that helped you guys today. Today was all about boosting your ovarian reserve and increasing the anti-malarian hormones. So the nutrients that I've gone through today have some really strong studies associated to them. So this is why I've gone through these and these are the ones that I think you can really make a difference if you know your anti-malarian hormone is low or you know you have issues with follicle stimulating hormone or you're over 38 and you're trying to boost your ovarian reserve so that you can fall pregnant. So I hope that helped you today. If you've got any questions, please pop them below. And if you're enjoying the fertility, we haven't really gone into fertility much, but if you wanna know more about fertility and you want me to do some Facebook Lives on it, feel free to let me know and we can do a few more on it because it is a fun subject for ladies who are trying to conceive and um, can be quite overwhelming, I know, when you don't know where to start. So have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.